place. All right, so let's keep going. Let's see what happens if we use those assumptions. So again, we're going to try and use, <clears throat> we're going to write our um, differential equation in the weak form. Um, for the sake of, for the purpose of plugging in for a specific case, let's assume that the temperatures on the boundaries are given. So let's, let's suppose that I'm given a temperature TA on, let's say, the left boundary and a temperature TB on the right boundary. Um, so what we discovered is that the weak form in that situation, if I'm using the test functions um, that, that go to zero on the boundaries, then that extra boundary evaluation just goes away. We don't have to deal with it. Um, if, if that wasn't the case, then we'd have to add those as unknowns on the boundaries and keep going. Okay, so um, let's, we're going to represent our temperature profile as this piecewise linear polynomial um, that includes terms. So these are the unknown temperatures that are on the interior of the domain um, with some piecewise polynomials associated with each one of these. Um, and then some extra terms that are basically from the boundary conditions. So there's a temperature on the left and right boundary, and they have their own in piecewise linear polynomial that goes with them. So together, all of that stuff will allow you to estimate the temperature profile, if I had the T sub n. Um, then to that, I'm going to use the test function, n tense test functions that are constructed exactly the same as these piecewise linear um, tent functions that go with the temperature. So uh, if there are n of these test uh, interpolation functions for the temperature, then I'll choose the same n of those as my test functions. Um, let's plug those into our governing equation and see what happens. Okay, we're going to plug in for the mth tense test function. So this is for a particular value of m. So remember that I'm going to go through and I'm going to test the weak form m times, once for each test function w sub m. Um, so the, again, the w, like, so in, in this case, I need to take, like, let's say the first derivative of that test function. So that's dpm dx. And then I need to um, you know, basically go in and plug our temperature guess into both here and I guess that's really just it. So that breaks apart into two pieces because there's one piece that's associated with the interior and then another piece associated with the boundaries. Um, so if you check that out, once you plug it into here, you'll see that you get two terms, one that has to do with the unknown temperatures and one that has to do with the boundaries plus this term that has the, let's say, the uh, internal heat generation just kind of comes along for the ride. Um, so let's see. Yeah, we got that all down, right? So that ooh, looks kind of ugly. Let's um, do a little work on that to make it look like something helpful. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup it. So this is the same equation that I had written on the other page. What I want to show you now is that that's actually a linear set of algebraic equations that you can solve for the n unknowns in temperature. How do you do that? Basically, it involves rearranging the order of this summation and this integral. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch the order of them since it doesn't, summations and integrals can be, the order can be interchanged. So I'm going to take this summation, move it to the outside, and I'm going to take this integral and I'm going to move it to the inside of that. Um, and then look what it is. So uh, again, I have a, the summation is over, there's a, there's a T sub N here. So these are just a bunch of constants um, for each value of N. So they can't come outside the, um, summation, but they can come outside the integral if I swap positions. So if I do that, what I'll see is, so in parentheses, this is the portion that I need to integrate. So what is this? This is an integral over the derivative of the piecewise linear polynomials that I have. This is a really easy integral to do because these are linear polynomials. So if I tell you which n, which value of n, so like which um, temperature I'm trying to calculate this for, and which m, so which tensions function, it's very easy to actually calculate what this integral is analytically, typically. Um, 
and, and at the very least with just a little bit of numerical effort. So what is this? So this integral depends on which value of n I choose and which value of m, because it you know, depends on which test function and which interpolation function. So this integral basically depends on m and n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label that result as some number that depends on m and n times the unknown value of temperature and then what I need to do is I need to add that over all values of n. Guess what? That is the definition of matrix vector multiplication. Um, I have a summation over n of a number that depends on m and n times a number t sub n sum, summed over all of that. That is the definition of a matrix vector multiplication. Look at what the other integrals are. Um, so everything that goes into these are unknowns. There's just the slate, or is, sorry, is known, except for I have to compute this integral over A to B of these piecewise linear polynomials again. So um, that is actually very easy to do. I'm going to label that as something that depends only on M. It does not depend on the N that was in the original summation because there's no summation for these back two terms. So what is that? That is just some number that I can compute that depends on the value of M. So depending on which test function I use, I'll get a different value to these, you know, numerical evaluation of these integrals. I'm going to label that minus B sub M. So the, the value that I get from these integrals, I'll label that minus B, and it depends on which value of M I choose. So I'm going to let, label this as some constant indexed by the number M. So what is this? This, like, if I think about all the different possible values of M, this is a vector. Um, this is a column vector B. So I have essentially a matrix times a sub, an unknown equals minus a, list, a vector, which is known. Um, this, so if I m were to move the minus B to the other side of the equation, you would see that this is just AX equals B. This is a linear set of algebraic equations, and actually, although it uh, because if I interchange the M and the N, you'll see that this matrix is actually always symmetric in addition. So, uh, and since there's no imaginary things here, this is a symmetric real matrix. Um, and although I don't know how to prove it quickly, it turns out that for realistic problems, these also have positive um, eigenvalues. It's a symmetric positive definite matrix. Um, very e easy to solve numerically for the unknown T sub n's. Um, so that is the magic of the finite element method, is the ability to turn what was originally a partial, or I guess in this case it was an ordinary differential equation, into a system of algebraic equations for the unknowns T sub n.